Hello, this is the fifth module in a video series about using the concepts from the Baldrige Improvement Model for Department and Unit Improvement. This module is all about who does what you do, your workforce. Without your workforce, you wouldn't be able to accomplish anything you want to achieve. Milton, a fictional character from Office Space shown here, certainly contributes little to the success of his company. But is that Milton's fault, or is it the fault of the company where Milton works? Is it Milton's lack of skills and effort in his job to blame? Or is it a problem with the systems and processes used by his company to support his success? The success of your unit is highly dependent upon the success of your people. But is the success of your people dependent primarily upon their individual skills, effort, and characteristics? Or is it about the systems and processes your unit uses to support success? Certainly both play a role. We can all think of times when a person did not have and couldn't develop the skills necessary for a job. But most of the time, the success of our people is dependent on the systems and processes we have in place to support their development. What the Baldrige model emphasizes is the idea that the systems and processes you use to manage your workforce will have a major effect upon the success of your people. And that when people are successful, it's because we have fully functioning systems and processes. So for example, I have a friend who works for a technology company in another state. For years, she worked very hard, extra hours, late into the evening, on weekends, sacrificing her personal life outside of work with the hope that this work would be recognized and eventually rewarded with a promotion. Last year, she said, she realized that the amount of work she put in had no bearing on the likelihood that she would get promoted or earn a raise. So why should she continue to put in those extra hours and work? So instead of helping her advance, grow, and develop as an organizational leader, she's now putting in the minimum effort needed to keep her job while she looks around for other places that will be better suited to meet her long-term career goals. This company had a high performer, who was failed by the systems and processes this company has in place for recognizing and supporting high performance and for developing future leaders in the company. So in this module, I'm going to talk about four areas of systems and processes. Workforce capability and capacity, the workforce environment, performance management, and professional development. This first section is about the capability and capacity of your workforce. So thinking about workforce capability is to consider what your workforce is able to do right now. What can they do right now is represented by the circle on the left. What the workforce can do right now might include specific skills, areas of expertise or knowledge, and the interface of these things with the tools and resources available to them. So for example, I might know how to build a skyscraper, but if I don't have thousands of tons of steel, I'm not really capable of doing that right now. And if there's lots of things in this circle on the left that are not part of what you need the workforce to be able to do right now, then you might be underutilizing their work, your workforce's capability. The other thing that's important to consider with capability is to understand what the workforce needs to be able to do. What are the specific skills, ability, knowledge, dispositions needed to achieve your mission? So for example, if you're tasked with running a vaccine clinic, don't know why that might be on my mind right now, if you don't have the capability in your workforce to, say, sterilize needles, then you have no chance of achieving your mission. So for the things that are in the circle on the right that do not overlap with your current workforce capability, you have options. You can strategically hire additional workforce members to fill that gap. You can seek out a vendor who can provide that service to you. You can identify resources or tools your workforce might need to bridge that gap, or you can engage in professional development to give your workforce the missing skills and abilities they need. Workforce capacity is related to the capability and that if the capability isn't there, then the capacity is zero. For the areas where there is sufficient capability, then capacity is about the how much that can be provided. Going back to my example about the vaccines, if you're running a vaccination clinic and there's demand from, say, 300 million people, but you only have the capacity to complete six vaccines an hour, how long will it be before you meet that demand? The answer is 5,708 years, and that's if you keep the vaccine clinic open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So this way, capability and capacity are really two sides to a coin. Another important thing for organizations to address is the changes in capability and capacity demands over time. So for instance, at the end of our 5,708 year vaccination campaign, demand for the vaccine may change somewhat. Or during the vaccination campaign itself, you might find people are not willing to be vaccinated at three o'clock in the morning, resulting in uneven demand for vaccination during the hours of the day. How will you prepare for the changes in capacity over time? And the same issue arises with changes in capability. The things you need your workforce to be able to do right now will change. Say, for example, if they develop a new faster vaccination syringe, but it uses uh, requires additional training to use it, um, how you'll be sure that the capability of your workforce is able to respond to those new capability demands. The second topic in this module is about the workforce environment. Again, this is about thinking about processes and systems rather than individuals. It's about considering the broad context in which the work is to take place. 
So one way to think about the workforce environment is to consider the needs of the workforce. One model that might be helpful to think about a bit is uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. How does your workforce environment in your organization support safety of the workforce, their need to belong to something, feelings of accomplishment, access to comfort? Some of these needs will be more relevant for some of your workforce members than others, just like we don't expect students to learn when they're hungry. Why would we expect high performance from our workforce if they didn't feel they don't belong or if they're not in a safe space? It's also important to reflect on how the workforce environment supports diversity of background, of thought, of opinion, and how the workforce environment supports equity and, ec and accessible uh, access and is inclusive. These topics are central values of the college, and if we really believe in them, we must model them in our workforce. The University of Iowa offers the Working in Iowa survey as a tool for understanding the workforce environment in your unit. To get a written report, you have to have at least 10 responses from your unit. For smaller units, this can be kind of a challenge. The, two, the survey calls covers two broad topics. The first is engagement, which is the extent to which members of the workforce invest themselves in the work. And the other is about workforce environment, such as the distribution of workload and professional development opportunities. Now, if your unit's not big enough to get a report, you might consider using some of these types of questions in a small group discussion, um, or you might also use them as a way to inform annual performance reviews of supervisors as they contribute to the workforce environment in important ways, or as discussion topics and one-on-one -on -one meetings with members of the workforce. Areas that you identify as opportunities for improvement could then be incorporated into professional development, development plans on the individual level or for the whole unit. Okay, part three, the performance management is about the systems and processes that you use to support high performance. Now, sometimes it can be easy to think about high performance as a focus on hiring only rock stars in your office. Some days as a manager, you might find yourself thinking, gee, how easy would my job be if all of my employees were rock stars? Now, I would argue that managing an office of rock stars would not be that easy because everyone would show up to work late and there'd be a lot more drinking and bad haircuts. And I think it's important to remember that even Milton, a fictional character, of course, was originally hired on purpose to meet a need of the organization. That he no longer meets that need is a failure of Milton to invest himself in his work, but it's also a failure of the organization to create the environment in which Milton's skills and abilities can grow and flourish. So performance management is about how your organization creates the context in which high performance is the norm. Now, there's no single formula to ensure high performance. Some considerations include, do we have a shared sense of mission and purpose? Many people choose a career in higher education because of their passion for the work. And how is that passion engaged? How is the individual passion connected to the mission of your organization? Another factor considers how your unit awards high performance. Do you have opportunities to recognize those who have completed excellent work? Do you take time to celebrate high performance, such as when you receive a big grant or publish a major, major paper or help a student persist to graduation? And the third factor is to consider whether the workforce has the tools and resources to achieve high performance. You know, as a homeowner, I find I must frequently perform minor repairs around the house. I'm not particularly skilled at home repair, but it makes a huge difference when I have the right tools. When I have the right tools, my performance on the home repair elevates itself from dismal to merely passable. And finally, professional development is critical to the success of your workforce. Pro professional development is important for two reasons. First, as discussed earlier, your capability and capacity of your workforce today is not what you'll need in the future. So if we're going to be successful in the future, then you better be planning for how you're going to get the workforce to where it needs to be. And second, professional development is an important aspect of keeping your workforce engaged. Building new skills and learning new things can help members of the workforce stay interested and connected to their work. So when you're thinking about professional development plans, it's important to remember that there's two levels to consider. At the basic level is individual professional development plans. This is about each person in your unit having a plan for what skills or knowledge they want to develop. At the broader level, there's it's important to think about what are the needs for the organization as a whole. So some organizations have professional development, development plans across the whole organization that reflect training on skills and knowledge that maybe are connected with a new initiative or new software or just a topic that's related to where the organization wants to improve its performance over time. At the individual level, the college has a template that's recommended to be completed at least annually for all members of the workforce. Items that might be included include an individual professional development plan might be things related to their current job description or learning related to new technology tools or even areas of personal interest that are related to the area of work that might have relevance in the future for them. At the organizational level, the professional development plans might be related to the strategic plan or they could be related to disciplinary or professional standards. Many professional associations have lists of competencies that could be used to develop a professional development unit for a plan. 
Uh, plans might also be about a group activity that's used to build rapport and relationships between members of the workforce and can be organized around a topic that's of interest to the whole unit, such as customer service or diversity, equity, or inclusion. Um, there's lots of short books that can be found in the business section of the bookstore that will work well for this sort of small group discussion. That's all for this module. Your workforce is so important to your success. I hope you find it valuable to work through the examining the capability and capacity of your workforce, seeking to improve the workforce environment, considering strategies for supporting high performance, and intentionally planning for professional development. Thank you for viewing this module.